Okay, good to know. Yeah, there's a this nifty little button that is the microphone button, and if I don't push it, it doesn't work. So anyway, this is the Lead Generation Source Wednesday webinar. Thanks for letting me know, Sandra, that you can hear me. And can you see my screen? Good, good. Okay. So I was expecting to have Linda and possibly Joanne hop on, but neither one of them are on right now. So I'm just going to start. And then if they join us, um, we might, you know, back up a little bit. But let's say, okay, so this week we're going to talk about Google+. Plus. And last week we talked a little bit about Pinterest, and I know we've got some questions on that, but I hope that everybody's created their business account and started to go ahead and build some followers, you know, pin some stuff, just kind of get familiar with the platform. And then we'll revisit each of these as we build them, right? So we're just kind of getting them started right now, building the foundation, and we'll keep building on them over the weeks. So this week we're going to look at Google+. And, but before we do that, let's do a little recap. So over the prior weeks, we've talked about search engine optimization. And of course, on-page search, search engine optimization helps us define our pages for search engines and possibly even Facebook ads. We don't really know that for sure, nobody knows. But off-site search engine optimization includes creating backlinks that act as a vote for our site and the keywords we identify. And you know, we talked about that. We talked about also how off-site SEO creates backlinks, but it also helps drive traffic back to our site, which is kind of a double reward because we want the traffic. And the traffic also is good for search engine optimization. So it's kind of like this double reward when we are doing all of these activities. So if nothing else, we're building links, but we're also hopefully getting some traffic with that. And, you know, I put this in here and I actually think I mentioned it again. So even though everything we will do from here on out will help with search engine optimization, these are all standalone strategies for driving traffic. Google Plus might be one we do not expand on for traffic. And I'll talk a little bit about that and why. Um, so I'm still a little stuffed up. So if I start randomly swallowing, it's because I can't breathe. Okay, building links and driving traffic. So, you know, I say this every week, we can't control it all. So let's work on what we can control. It's nice to rank on page one for Google, but we have zero control over it. Oh, yes, yeah, Sandra, I'm good. It's just it's that random, you know, that sinus infection, random. Hopefully this one, this time it goes away for good. Now that spring's coming. Actually, we skip spring. We go to summer like really fast. It'll be like 80 degrees here pretty soon and really humid. But anyway, so while it is nice to rank on page one, and I know we would all love to, to rank on page one for whatever search term, we have zero control over this. And you know, a good example of that is anybody who's ranked on page one knows that they get knocked off of page one randomly and then they have to work to get back there. And sometimes they don't ever make it. So Google's emphasized content and that for e-commerce, that makes it a little bit more difficult. And we'll talk more strategies over time. But that's why it's also important for us to be on as many channels as possible. Because we can't really compete directly with Google Shopping and content. But we'll try. So ranking on pages requires that we beat other people on a variety of rules and parameters. We don't know what it is. Nobody knows. Even Google doesn't know what their algorithm entails. They have different people working on different parts. So nobody ever knows at any given time how to rank, like here are the rules to ranking. They have, we have some general stuff, but you know, as we build, when we're building all of these other strategies, it'll help us drive the traffic. We'll find our audience. Our specific audience may not be in search engines. They might be on YouTube. They might be in Google Plus. They might be specifically on Pinterest. We don't know until we test and we collect data. All right, so here are the elements we've covered so far. Keyword research. And again, this is the, if not the most important, now it probably is. It's probably the most important element of everything that we do. And that's regardless of whether you're doing on-site or off-site. And the reason is, is that if people are typing in a phrase and you're not, and in, in, in your product represents that phrase, but they can't find you for that, it's like, it's like a mismatch. You know, you can't, it doesn't, you never go past that point. And the op offset of that is if you're using a phrase that nobody ever uses, a word or a phrase that nobody uses, then nobody's ever going to find you. Now that's kind of like the extreme. You can still, you'll still get found for different things, but, and Google likes to pick and choose Google specifically. Bing and Yahoo are a little bit more straightforward, but um, Google likes to specifically pick and choose what it wants to do. So it may not pick 
the phrase that you have, it may re jumble up the words or whatever. So anyway, the keyword research is critical because we know from Google what those keywords are. We know how to put them and where to put them. And so that keyword research is the most important. Then, of course, you know, we talked about putting the keyword in the title, first sentence, again, in the first paragraph. If you have an H2 or H3, include the keyword. And, of course, e-commerce, there's some, some variation in that. You may not have an H2 or an H3. Make sure you have pictures and that you have the keyword in the title and the metadata and include a video in your page that you've embedded from YouTube. You know, these are all things for on-page SEO. And then we're creating backlinks. So we're doing that by, you know, sharing the content and then, of course, creating other content and bringing it back. So when, when, once we've done all of these elements, we talked about, you know, Pinterest. So we talked about Facebook. We talked about Twitter, LinkedIn, and now Pinterest. And this week we're going to look specifically at Google+. So, you know, social media is a critical component of driving traffic now. And several, several sources have said, look, social media is basically the way it's going. You know, print, print media is on the way out. Now, that doesn't mean it's gone yet. So if you're doing print media of some sort or you're you know, doing traditional, obviously um, networking will always exist, but it's existed since the beginning of time. But if social media is where everybody is right now, I mean, there's more people are in restaurants on their phones than they are talking to each other and networking. So I'm thinking social media is here to stay. So let's see where we can find these people. I know, no kidding, Sandra Print. I know, um, when back in the day when I first started doing um, EP Laser, the, so e-commerce stuff, EP Laser, that was back in like 2013. It was before everybody was jumping on the whole, you have to sell your stuff on social media. Now, social media was there and obviously I was in it. But to be honest, it was there was no clear strategy, especially for a small startup company. So that's, of course, how I learned everything is because I needed to. Um, but I went to look at print and I was like, even the ho small hobby magazine, you know, reach of 500 people or something. They're like, we'll take a thousand dollars. And I'm like, no. So, yeah, print is still really expensive. And my guess is it's going to get more expensive as you've seen. You'll see that there's um, a specific audience that requires print. And because of that, that means it's going to be a very, you know, narrow market but those are people who may represent buyers it's hard to tell it's hard to track print however in a future webinar we'll talk about ways that you can track that if you do print stuff like if you do flyers or something now i know all of us are with that are on right now are with um trex so we're probably not doing anything print but if we do i have some strategies for that later on okay so the top social media channels and I have a little disclaimer down here. So Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google+, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. And while we've discussed YouTube in prior weeks, we're actually going to switch this around. And I'm going to put Instagram, instead of Instagram being next week, I'm going to push it till after we talk more about YouTube. And the reason why is because Instagram only has one link, right? It only has one link to send it back. So even though it can be highly beneficial, until there's until we build a strategy for Instagram, our efforts on Instagram could be um ads that's about the only thing we can do and of course we're doing that with our facebook ads if we're running ads still so i'm going to go to youtube because i've got some some strategies in there that can drive some more traffic and we can then go back to instagram and spend a couple weeks on instagram because that'll be again a little bit more complex for the strategy uh, and i want to expand more on youtube like i've got a, a great video resource that's free but it's all app it's um on your phone app based and i need to i want to get that out so that we can start doing video that's important okay google plus like any of these platforms there are people that spend their time on google platforms and that is i mentioned this again later but people who are on google plus are loyal to google plus it's kind of like the craigslist my craigslist example will endure for a while you know we looked at this on monday that Craigslist started in 1995 and it still exists and there are still people who are just now finding it and still people who are loyal to it and still shop, you know, still buy stuff from Craigslist. That's how they do most of their buying their, their items. So now that's not like groceries and stuff. I don't think I've never tried to buy groceries on Craigslist, but you know, then of course the Craigslist killer and Craigslist stories all pop up and that kind of like ruined it for them. However, they still are around. I still sell on my resale stuff, my resale store, I still sell 
regularly. I get at least one or two people a week coming in from Craigslist. And to compare that, I get one or two people a week from my other platforms. So it's like an even if I have four platforms that I'm on that I regularly get traffic from, it's like a quarter of my traffic comes from Craigslist. So it's kind of evenly spread out there, which is interesting. So same thing with Google+. Plus. Even if Google+, Plus, some people think that it's dead, and this is part of the reason my we may only implement it for SEO is that it may not be where we want to be. But it, even if it even if it is dead, there's still people that are specifically loyal to it. And we need to find out if those people are our buyers, right? Are there are our, our conversions? Are those the people we need to target? So that's what we have to start it at least and get out there. And the other thing is, is that if somebody happens to come across it, they can't happen to come across it if we're not there. So of course, like all platforms, it has its pros and cons. And one of them is that it's attached to your Google account, which makes it extremely difficult to work around when you save your passwords like I do. And then, of course, if you have multiple accounts like I do, you have to go log in, log out, log in, log out, log in, log out. So it's very annoying. However, it's definitely worthwhile because um, I don't know if I say it on here. Maybe it's on the next one. Yeah. So I'll just keep going with the disadvantage is that the most effective way to drive traffic is to dive into the world. You have to, you know, you create circles, engage with others. You get, you have to like dive completely into Google Plus and like pretend like that's, you know, you're you're basically in your own virtual reality with them. That's the most effective way. And we may not want to do that. Now, personally, I don't want to do that. Google Plus is not, even though they're they're attaching it to YouTube, because of course Google Google properties include YouTube. It's a very written and blog world and in my opinion the way that we're going is less away from from you know the regular blogging and more to vlogging or video blogging which i don't even know if they call it vlogging anymore but that's what they used to call it so anyway so this again might be one strategy we just implement purely for the benefit of seo i'm going to talk a little bit about that so why worry about Google Plus? So Google reports a continued increase in Google Plus users. And there's one source that I found that stated 1.6 million new signups in 2017. Now, I should say that I don't know if that's new accounts or unique individuals because, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, but like I have, I don't know how many channels I have, but let's say I have five YouTube channels. I can have each one of those channels can attach to a brand Google Plus. And then I have my own personal Google Plus. So it's kind of like business and personal again. So I don't know how many of those are what. So theoretically, 1.6 million signups could represent a very small number in, in reality. So Google Plus is more for blogging. So if you're already blogging, it does make sense to spin some of your content and share it to this channel as well. And I know that some people may not know what it means to spin content and why. And so what it means when you spin content is you basically change the words. And there's software programs that can do this for you, but the reality is, is that you can easily go back in and just change up how you say something or adjust it because, and this goes to the why. The reason why you wanna do that, especially for a Google property and when we're looking at search engine optimization is that Google doesn't like content that is similar to other pages. So if you have two pages that have the exact same content, and they're, even if they're on completely different platforms, Google's, oh, well, that's not unique, so it's not important. You know, Sandra, there are some people that say spin as much as possible and some that say just change some of it. So, you know, there's, I think about like product descriptions and because, you know, theoretically, if I wanted for e-commerce, let's say that I have a, a product description on Amazon on Etsy, on my own page, and then let's say I do like a blog post that talks about it. Well, um, how much variation can I have with the product description? You know, if I'm focusing on my, you know, five benefits and I throw in the three features or whatever of it, then I'm going, how much variation can I possibly have? And because of that, I'm going to go with just selected areas. And I really think that that's pretty much the way it goes. I've seen, I have seen content that's identical, that ranks one, two, and three on stuff. So it's not like it has to be, it, there's some rule, like some hard and fast rule that Google is not going to show the content, but that's the theory is that it will penalize certain content if, if, um, well, if it's not doing what they want. And that's what it comes down to is they want to show you a variety of stuff. So their algorithm does look for unique contact content to place in the first positions, but you can easily 
still get your other content up there. I mean, I've seen product listings on, you know, three different platforms that all show up within the first two pages and they're the exact same product, right? So obviously with the exact same descriptions. So obviously it's not as dependent upon that, but I would say that if you can, and, and part of that might be Google's ignoring stuff because again, we don't know that algorithm. So there could be, okay, well, we know that we've identified this as a product, so we're going to ignore the similarities. Who knows? But for, for blogging, which on Google Plus is, you know, it is more for blogging, then you're going to want to probably try to make it unique on that platform. But I would just change part of it. I would change the first part of it nonetheless, because as we kind of talked about, I don't know which time, so whether it was Lead Generation Source or K&K, um, I'm going through a search engine optimization. Um, I don't know what the right word is, but it's like a mastermind group. And they've done some testing and they said that what happened was Google really wasn't reading past like, you know, 1500 words on the page. And some of them, it was even less. So I would say change out your first paragraph, possibly your second paragraph, depending on how long it is. If it's for e-commerce, I just switch out and focus, and, and this goes back to, of course, of course, knowing your audience. If people are coming in to from Google+, Plus, they're probably looking for, if you're you know targeting, I don't know, some sources say there's more men on Google+, Plus than women, but I saw that to be barely skewed, like a 52% to 48%. So if you're saying, okay, well, we're targeting men more here than we are on, say, a blog that you're putting on Pinterest, then I'm not saying you're putting the blog on Pinterest, but you're pinning a blog onto Pinterest. You might want to make sure that the one that you're pinning on Pinterest is targeting women, whereas the one you're putting on Google Plus is targeting men. I'd still pin that, but that's strategy we'll talk about later. So th when you write your content, you're writing to your audience and you might want to tweak it a little bit more for when you're on Google Plus versus somewhere else. So that might be just enough right there to change it. So, and again, Sandra, this is going to be all, we'll have to test it. If we, if, you know, if we can't, if we're really trying to rank something and we're on like spot eight and we can't budge and we're like, oh, hey, we've got duplicate content. Let's swap that out and see what happens. And, you know, then you turn around and say, okay, oh, yeah, that worked. That didn't work. We don't know until we test. But I can tell you that that is in the SEO world. That is the number one thing you try to avoid is duplicate content. But, you know, a lot of these people go in and spin their content with these software spinners and then it doesn't make any sense. You know, the grammar is horrible. There's words that don't make sense. You're like, nobody uses that word. I know that it's in your thesaurus from your software program, but nobody uses that word. And so if you go down, you drill down, it's like spinning it is, I think Google would rather it be content that makes sense to the end user than anything. Um, so Google keeps their business info private, which is ironic considering they mine all of our private data. Yeah, Brian, exactly. So when you spin it, you still have to go up and clean it. Yeah. Yeah, Sandra, there's a lot of different articles that pop up with like, we, all of a sudden you're going, wait a second, where's that phrase coming from? And then you go, well, maybe they hired somebody and then they just go, and then now that I know the whole world of spinning, like using software, because I always did it manually. And then I'm like, wait, there's software for this. And then I'd have to, once I use the software, which there's one that's really cheap. It's like 50 bucks a year to, for the, I mean, you just, you know, it's a $50 a year fee that they charge you and you, but you get access. It's the, um, I can't, I can't remember it. <clears throat> I don't use it anymore, but it was really good, but it was still, it would take me two hours to spend the content. I'm like, Holy crap. I could have wrote an entire different article by now. So I stopped. That's why I stopped spinning content and just started writing it myself. And of course I don't, you don't have to spin it either. You could just throw it out there exactly the way it is. I mean, lot, I mean, a news, when you send out a, a news notification, you know, you're doing, hey, news release, here's this information. You send out one news release. You don't change it to every single news station unless, of course, you're specifically targeting them for some reason. But for the most part, you just release the information and they pick it up and they write it the way they want to or they share it exactly as it is. So it's not there's there's obviously some leeway in this. But I would say if you can, the first the first couple sentences to paragraph which of course your paragraph should be small anyway. So the first couple sentences, if you change that, that'll probably be more than enough. And of course the metadata, change the metadata on a page if you can. So anyway, so they, um, Google does keep their business info private, which is extremely ironic considering they mine all of our, our private data and our business data and every other kind of data. But there are some third party groups that have somehow got a hold of some sort of information or they threw a dart at a wall, we don't know. 
but they estimate as many as 395 million monthly active users. My guess is worldwide, obviously, because I don't even think they have that many users in the U.S., with over 2 billion users registered worldwide. Nobody knows the real numbers, so that's kind of the problem you run into. And of course, I said this before, Google Plus users are loyal to Google Plus. It's like the Apple and the Android people. They are very loyal to each of them. Same thing, platform, you know, or my sister and I, we discuss this all the time. We argue about Adobe versus Corel. I'm like, they have different purposes. So I have them both, but she hates Adobe. And I'm like, but I can't get Corel to print the way I want to. So of course, you know, we're loyal to what we want. So anyway, this means that the people on Google+, Plus, remember I told you that the most effective is to get involved in the, in the circles and everything else? So the people who are loyal to Google+, Plus are going to be the people who are on Google+. Plus. We're not going to find them easily on other platforms. So if our audience is on Google+, Plus, we have to be there in order for them to find us. And then if we start looking at our data, which of course, I think we'll visit this on Monday in case we haven't already, if we're looking at our Google Analytics and we're saying, oh, hey, we're getting people coming in from that channel, we know that our audience is there and we can then ramp up and dive into that world more. But like I said, we may find out for now, we're just gonna do it for SEO and some testing. And I'm not gonna dive into the whole thing. So Google loves Google properties for SEO, right? So Google's ultimate goal is generating revenue through ads, but multiple tests, from many different people suggest that Google's search engine rankings placement are directly affected by their properties. And I'll tell you, I have found multiple people complaining that they were ranking on page one and then they got kicked off by somebody who put, who put a blog up on Google Plus and they have nothing else but the blog on Google Plus. So now, of course, that varies based on your industry, based on the niche, based on the time, based on the day, based on the second. But it does, Google does love their own properties. So that's why, you know, YouTube videos, Google Plus, if you're connected, if you have those backlinks, that's going to give you a lot more power than saying, oh, look, I have 152 people who have pinned to this. Google says, that's nice, but you just have a pin. That's pretty much how it goes. In fact, as far as we can tell for Google specifically, that unless you have a significant amount of difference than the average, a ton of pins or a ton of, a ton of mentions on Facebook or Twitter or whatever equals one of each of those. So even though we're going to use each of those strategies to drive traffic and the traffic is more important than it is to have 150 pins, you know, oh, somebody's repinned this 150 times. That's great. If you're not driving traffic from it, it's pointless for Google. But Google says, wait, you have something on this other property. That's good enough for us. That's a good thumbs up. I guess they're being snotty and they want to make their own money, right? So that's they they really do prioritize the content from Google Plus and the content from the other Google properties. So we might as well test and see if our audience is there and if it helps us rank, which it will. So that's kind of a no-brainer on that one as far as ranking. So steps for Google Plus. This is shifted. And so if you already have a Google Plus or if you already have a Google account, which I'm assuming most of us probably do by now, then it, it could look different for each one of us. So I tried to find one that I don't use much and we'll go ahead and do it live. But um, Google shifted so that you have your account is to so all accounts, whether it's Google Plus, YouTube or whatever, it's a Google account. And if there are any, I don't, I don't know if there are any unlinked properties right now. I think there were a couple they were working on. They're eventually, Google has already made it very clear that they're gonna be combining all of their properties into one Google account. So if there are any trickling properties that are out there, they're going to be linked in. So when you, you create a Google account, you can create these other properties, but that doesn't mean you automatically have them. And so when you either sign up for a Google account or you sign in and then, oh, I skipped a step, go to, then you would go to plus.google.com. Then on the left side, you can select join Google Plus to open that particular account or you, you know, you'd sign in at the top and you can do it another way too, but we're going to talk about that in just a second. So because things have changed recently and anything that I did two months ago could be different today, I'm actually going to try to do it today with you live. Now, this is what I want to tell you. So just as an FYI, each of your YouTube channels can have its own brand. And Brian's probably the only one that knows what this means because I'm sure Brian has multiple channels if he's working on YouTube. 
um, I have like multiple channels, right? So I have like a home security one, but I also have an RE security solutions one, which is my security company. So my, my each, even though that's all under my one account, my own, my Google account has multiple channels. Each channel can also have its own brand page. So I have a personal Google plus that's mine. That that's where all my accounts are under. Now you can have multiple Google accounts as well. So, which was funny because I had to find one that wasn't attached to my personal one. I was like, oh, I have multiple of those too. Let me see if I can find the password. So I found the password to one and that's the one we're actually going to do. And so what I did is my little biz resources one that I don't use much anymore, but this is where I went to plus.google.com. And I actually signed in. So here I'm signed in with the email that I have linked to it. And you guys probably recognize this email. Sometimes I used to email back in the day, but it gets so much spam now. I hardly ever, I use it for stuff, but oh my gosh, it's so much spam. So, and then of course I have lots of other ones, right? So I, you can log in here to your account. And then when you're on the plus.google.com, you can just click join Google plus. Oh, and actually I moved this so I can't see. All right. So join. Oh, can you guys see the, you guys can see this now, right? The, uh, it's not the PowerPoint anymore. We're now on Google. I want to make sure before I keep going, I have to back up. Okay, good. Thanks, Brian. Okay, so then it'll walk you through it, right? Now create your public Google plus profile. And of course, this is going to be linked to whatever this is. And again, like I said, this, there's two ways to do this. So if you're doing it, this is, they're assuming I'm an individual at this point. So we're going to walk through this like I'm doing it as an individual because they have no, no reason to think that I'm a business at this point. So we're going to see what happens. So I'm Kim Christian. I am a female. I wonder if you can say prefer. Oh yeah. I'd rather not say you can. I still don't care saying that I'm a female. So I'm going to create my profile. All right, and you can add in like a picture here and everything else, but I'm gonna actually skip that for now. And then we're gonna see, no thanks. So everybody's doing push notifications now, which is funny. And let's go to profile. We're gonna go to profile. That's the important part is the profile. And so you can create collections here and you can start doing this whole like getting involved, but you have an about section and we're going to do edit profile here and we can put whatever we want in here. Right? So we are going to see what it lets me click on. So upload a photo tagline at, you have to have a out of 140 and you can always ask for, see how people see about the about me. So you can even change the about me so they can see different things. Right, so you do different. So yeah, this is very much personal. And so I would actually, for my tagline, if I were going to do my personal one as my business, and I don't even think you can do this anymore, but you could try to put in. In fact, the way Google reads it is like if I was going to do, um, oh, well, little is resources, um, build your. What the freak does it do that for? My computer has this habit. Everybody goes, oh, it's saving something. But I'll be in the middle of typing and it'll just stop. And it's like clicking over to something else, but nothing. There's, It's not clicking on anything. It's really weird. And they're like, oh, if you have like a word. Oh, it's probably because I have PowerPoint open. Yeah, Brian, I guess they said that's the, the um, so yeah, because I have PowerPoint. It's like an auto, the auto save triggers that somehow. So anyway, I have to keep it open, so. If you ever have, if it does that, look and see if you have any of those properties open. I've also noticed that some web websites, like if it's some sort of, um, if it's doing something that has some sort of action on the site, then it will also do that. Like even if it's open in the background. So it's really weird. So good to know, Brian. We probably have the same software program that's doing it. We just don't know. So then I can save it. So anyway, you can go through and click around it and figure out what you want to do. So a little bit of resources. Oh yeah, I probably should type that correctly. Where I put that tagline, I put you, build you, edit profile. Let's put your, and you have 140 characters, so make use of it. In fact, let's see if I can put this in there. Put that in there. Now, I'll tell you that sometimes they'll have like rules where you can't do that, but even if it's not, if you can't hyperlink it, if you have it there, it'll still read that as a link. 
Google will. And actually, I think most of the, the search engines will. So then you can go through and you can just, and this is very, very personal and basic. Yeah, so you've got settings in here that you can do. They've changed so much of this. Obviously, I don't play much with Google Plus because uh, it's dying. Shh, I didn't say that. And then they'll walk you through what you want to do on here. But now you have it set up, right? So let's do this from, I wanted to show you the personal one. So the personal one is kind of really basic. Like I can do a lot more. And maybe it's because it's not in the about. Maybe it's because I need to go to the about. Go back to profile. And we'll go back to the about and see if that is where I can change a lot of this. Nope. Okay, so that's this. You're very limited in what you can do in here with your personal one. I never use my personal one. So I'm going to sign out of this one and I'm actually going to go into um, my regular one. And I'm going to show you from a channel standpoint, right? Oh, show me all my brand accounts. Good lead generation sources. That's what we're doing. Why am I here? Great. This is the fastest way to do it, by the way. We go into your channel if you're if you have YouTube already, which you should. If you don't, make one because this is like the easiest way to do this. Go to go to your channel and then share something, <laughs> and it lets you create it. But you can go back into it, like you can go back to that plus.google.com, right? Oh, tell me this, what's not the problem? And then you can switch to your brand account in the plus.google.com. I just did this. You better not take me to the same page. Okay. And I've still got this exact same thing here, right? But you can see I'm logged in here. I'm logged in as that brand account. So you can do it either way. You can do it from YouTube and share something. And it'll walk you through it. That's like the fast and easy and cheating way. Or you can go to plus.google.com and then you'll be on your brand account and you can be say enable Google plus. And so now it says, Oh, look, enable Google plus for your brand. So that's completely different than your personal account. And if you sign in as like a personal account, then it it just, it's really different. Obviously you saw that. It's like really basic, you can't do much, but this one is, is a lot more. So now you they can find you, they can do all this stuff. So this is what we really wanna do for our brands. You can still, if you're like, oh, hey, you know what? All I wanna do is be able to share something and link back to a specific piece of content like YouTube. You can always share that to your personal one without building out a, a brand one. I recommend the brand one because that helps build up if, you know, when you get into that community, you get, it's more of a, people can act on your stuff now instead of you acting on everybody else's stuff. So that's, I guess, if you're going to use it, use it from the personal side. And if you're going to share the content, try to do it from your, um, your brand from this side. So I'm going to go ahead and enable it for this one for lead generation source because I have not done that yet. And it apparently had to think about it. And then we can go back through the exact same thing where we can do the profile. Now, remember, this is this profile now is it looks just the same, but it's going to be for lead generation source. So um, generating. So it looks very similar leads and driving traffic. And it better let me do my manage page. So hold on. Save. Edit the profile again. Let me do that again. Manage page. Yeah, so now I have this, and you have this in the personal one too, but it's um, same thing, tagline, you can manage it, you can, you can adjust this. There's so many, this is why Google Plus is such a pain, because there is no one way to fix Google Plus. I mean, you have to click around and find everything. There's no like, oh, do this, then this, then this. I mean, there's no, what's next, right? You're like, oh, okay, I type that in, uh, save, and then it leaves you here. And now you have this page where you have your collections and everything. And then you have, you can go into your about section, which this is your manage page again. And so there's just, there's no real clear way to do all of this. And it's so annoying. But now that I've got Google plus on here, I can go into YouTube. And this is part of the reason why I like it is when you're logged in as your channel and you're going to share, you, it makes it, it kind of streamlines it. So now I can go back into my channel. I wonder if they're just ex socially experimenting with us. 
So let's say I wanted to, to share this one, which I don't want to. I wonder why it's not the beginning there. So I'm going to say share, and then right here is this Google+. Plus. What? Huh. That's not the right account. I wonder why it's doing that. Okay, we're just going to do this anyway then. Again, this is why everybody hates freaking Google+. So the point is to get in here and make sure that you edit stuff. So you have an introduction here. You have where you can link. So we could not link in the personal one, right? There was no real information there. And maybe you could, and I just didn't go far enough. But the great thing is that when you've built your brand, you can say, you know, come, come join us every Wednesday, when, Wednesday. Where we and of course you would want to optimize this better, right? So if I were doing lead generation source is the the keyword, so I would say um, lead generation source helps you. Um, what I say generate generate leads and drive drive traffic. Um, join us, and you could do you know as much as you want. In fact, a lot of people make this like an article, like a whole biography for your brand. And then I can go ahead and do www.leadgenerationsource.com. And then it looks like I can just, oh, that's probably what I need to do. Say okay. And now that is an actual hyperlink in there. What does that say? Why is that private? I want it public. Do you want to make it public? And that one says public. So you have your introduction. Make sure you make that public because otherwise people can't click on it. And so then as you start building stuff and you start sharing your content, if there's somebody on, you know, let's see here. Let me try something else here. Now that I'm on this page, what does this do? Contact info. Huh, that's funny. Phone, email, that's hilarious. And you have an album archive where you can put pictures and you can do, so this, oh, Google products like the cost of Google Plus and Blogger. So you see, they're linking all of their entities together, right? All of their entities are linking together. So when you, eventually, once you build up all of these, you can, and this is where I'm going with it. I'm not going to come in here and play the this way. I'm going to eventually go into something like, oops, not bugger. I'm going to go into buffer. I talk with my hands, so when I place them back on the keyboard, they're not always where they belong. You know, we talked about this before, like doing something where we, we automate this. But look, you can just share automatically to Google+, Plus, right? So I'm no longer messing around with their unusable interface. I'm just going to be scheduling the content. I'm going to be, instead of going into to YouTube and sharing, I'm going to be just going ahead and linking it through whatever Google Plus networks I can link. Now, sometimes, and this might be the problem, like I don't do a whole lot with Google Plus. Like a lot of my stuff is already automated, so I don't even mess with it. I don't even know how it's connected. So I might be actually sharing that on my personal one, and I don't even know it because when I set it up, that was like forever ago. But the whole thing is you still want them to be able to find your brand on Google Plus because that brand is how you get that link back. And that gives you that legitimacy. So Google Plus, while I do honestly feel like it's going to become the Snapchat of the world, which is funny. So side note on Snapchat, but I'll tell you that in a second. So Google Plus is definitely an entity you want to be in for building back a link. If you're if you're going to blog at all, and if, even if you're not going to blog right now, what we'll do later on is we're going to build out how we can put some content pieces out. And even if we don't spin them, even if we just put them identical, at least if they're on there, because here's the, what's the worst that happens if we put the identical content on there? Somebody else finds it. It may not help us with with building the the search engine optimization, but if we can find if people find it and still come to our site, that's the whole point of it, right? That's the whole point of being on these platforms is to drive the traffic. I mean, we know we're not going to get on page one for the keywords immediately. 
we're going to need that traffic to help us boost that. So if we can get the traffic and then we're saying, oh, hey, yeah, this is where we are. Let's now let's tweak this. Let's we this one's a good converting product. Let's put more effort into that. But until we build to that point, you know, we've talked about this before, you know, maybe we test on Etsy, find a product that converts and then focus our efforts on that product. That's something that we have to decide. And well, each of us has to decide, not we as a group, because we as a group don't decide on our own business plans. But as a group, I think that, you know, we can probably look at this and say that Google Plus is definitely on the way out. No, I'm just kidding. We don't have to say that. <laughs> if they find me, they're like, okay, we're tagging every single one of your sites and you're not going to be optimized for anything. In fact, nobody will find you. Oh, that power would be horrible. But you do, when you come in here, you definitely want to edit your profile and make sure you get a good picture in here. And what I tip, what I typically do is, dang it, I didn't want to do that. Sorry, I know I'm a clicker. So when you come in here, usually they will give you the dimensions and you want to pick the dimensions that are going to work. But there are some people, oh, see, that was good. That one worked out really well. I think that's actually the one I use on YouTube. So that's probably why. So I try to keep it consistent. Keep your branding images consistent so that it all looks the same. If you change one, change them all. You know, keep them so that they're very consistent. And then of course I use this one just because I like it. But if you have something, if you're, you know, if your niche is um, cars, if you're in a specific, I wouldn't say cars, I'd say Porsche, you know, and you'd want to put like a picture of a Porsche there pending you have the right to do that. And then, you know, if your if your niche is going to be um, something religious, I would put something, you know, something symbolic of that. If you have a, a product that's a higher converting one or an image from a product that's a higher converting one, you might want to put that in there to help, you know, give that consistency. But um, anything you can do to, to give that that flow and that, oh, hey, I'm branding myself. That's what the point of this. These entities are. Google is very pro branding. Right. We don't have to brand to survive, but they are very pro branding. So try to keep your your profiles consistent. It'll help you in your brain, too, as you build, because you will go, wait, which one am I on? If you have the same picture in all of them like I do on Pinterest, it's a nightmare. So we want to make sure everything, like I said, everything's public and then we can build up all of the images that we have. So we've got a little icon. We'll have the little background on it. We want to make sure that doesn't. OK, it does load. And then we can even create a collection, right? And we can say, what, you can start doing stuff if you want to. However, I'm going to say for our tasks this week related to that, we want to, our action items, set up a Google Plus page for either your brand or your own personal one. It really doesn't matter at this point, right? We just want to be able to share our content and get those and get that link juice. So whichever one you're more comfortable with doing, you can do. I just wanted to show you that you could have a ton of pay, of Google Plus pages and that you can have that link in there and everything else. So even if you just do a personal one because you're like, oh my gosh, I only have one Google account. I only have, I don't have my YouTube set up. I don't have this. Just set up the Google Plus page and then you can share your content as you're building it. Because I know a lot of us are still building our content to be, you know, our videos and our pictures and trying to find our converting products. I know a lot of that's going on. So our action items for this week for this are just to set up either or. If you want to do more, that's fine. Brian, if you want to go crazy and set up Google Plus pages for all of your channels, go for it if you have time. But most of us don't have that kind of time. So just, you know, focus on setting up one and then make sure you go through and set your profile you know get that link in there whether it's in your personal or and if if it's if you're not ready to throw in a link to your main page and you don't have a main converting product then skip the link for now right just make sure you set up a profile get the pictures in there make it look like it's a legit profile and then if you're if you get to that point share some content even if it's just a video it doesn't have to be your video I just want you to go through that motion, right? I want you to go through the motion of sharing the content from YouTube. And then um, next week, we're actually going to go more into YouTube. And this is going to go back to part of the reason why I'm holding off on Instagram, again, is because Instagram, there, there's actually something I just learned about Instagram, and I need to implement it before I can teach it. So if what I figured out was right, Brian, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. I don't know if you do much with Instagram. Do you, Brian, do anything on Instagram right now? You do. Okay. So you might even know it. Um, I don't know if I have it, the paper. I don't have my notes with that one on there. But it's something called, 
really? Well, then Brian, you might need to come on and teach us about Instagram because I have a lot of Instagram accounts. They do nothing though. Instagram, I'm at that, I was joking about this the other day. I'm like, I'm in the invisible generation where, you know, I'm not a millennial. So millennials really like the Instagram stuff. And then like baby boomers really like the Pinterest stuff, right? And so I'm like, oh my gosh, what is mine? Facebook's more millennials. You're over 50. You're a Pinterest one, but you're a guy. So you get like a pass. So, but I don't know. Are you in, are you in a baby, are you a baby boomer if you're over 50? I don't know what that cutoff is. I think my mom's the cutoff and she's almost 60. So wait, or is she 60? Oh crap. I think she turned 60 last year. Did I even say happy birthday? I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. The generation X, that's what I am. Yeah. See, now that's funny. So Instagram supposedly is for, I'm going to go with 36 and under now because literally it was 35 last year. So I'm going to go with 36 and under. They said like 90, somewhere between 90 and 95% of users last year. It's changed. It's, it's grown. She's 49. See, now the fact that she's on Instagram is impressive to me because she's not the only one that is on Instagram. And it, and this brings me back to Snapchat. So I didn't know this because I just refused to use Snapchat. I was so stupid. I saw my, one of my stepsons, I saw them use it and I'm like, that's like the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And it, I mean, it was fun, I guess, but I was like for advertising purposes and stuff, there's like no real use for it. So I never really, I never really did anything with it. And I was um, doing this training this weekend for Chatmatic, by the way. And um, he was talking about how Snapchat is basically poised to be the next MySpace. And for anybody who doesn't know what MySpace is, MySpace was Facebook before Facebook, right? So it was MySpace. MySpace didn't adapt. They didn't adjust. They didn't really market very well. Facebook comes along. Like I think right around the same time, but Facebook just blew up, right? I mean, just dominated. And now Facebook is where you go. You don't really go to MySpace unless you're like into specific things like music, maybe a little bit of artsy stuff, but it's very hyper-focused. <laughs> Sandra. Now, see, that's – and I, I think there's a purpose in the personal use, but I don't think Snapchat can monetize – as well as Facebook and now Instagram. So what, what Travis was saying, he said, yeah, so Snapchat had these things called stories, right? And now we know that Instagram has that, but Instagram used to not have that. And so Facebook looks at it and goes, oh, wow, Snapchat has that. Let's do that. And so they did that and Instagram started growing. Well, Snapchat didn't adjust, didn't adapt, didn't change, didn't market well enough, whatever, didn't have enough power behind them. And so they slowly started dying. And I guess, um, this, their growth stopped, I should say. And I don't know, Jenner, Kylie Jenner, is that a real name? I don't know. One of those Jenner people that is in media has like the largest Snapchat following, I guess. And I, and for some reason something happened and the Jenner person, which I still don't remember which one it was, um, tweeted out something about, does anybody even open Snapchat anymore? And the Snapchat stock dropped 20% just by that one tweet. That was a tweet. I'm like, who uses Twitter? I'm so behind on like using stuff. Like I use it for business, but like personally, I don't know people who use social media. Like everybody I know uses it for business. So it's really funny. Like my husband, he just barely got Facebook the other day, like a couple months ago, seriously. And it was because I told him to. I said, you need to do this in case I get my account banned. <laughs> and he goes... Okay. So he's attached to like everything. doesn't even know it. I'm like, here, let me have your phone. But yeah, Brian, I'd be interested to, if you are willing to hop on here and share some Instagram strategies, I'd like to, you know, push that out to maybe, maybe two weeks from now or whatever is convenient for you. We can even do a special separate one or something and have you come on and, you know, just talk about how you're using Instagram and what you do and everything. I have a software program for Instagram because, you know, up until like December-ish or November-ish, they didn't have an API. So most of these software programs couldn't connect with them and you couldn't automate stuff or anything. And I mean, there's probably something out there that figured it out without an API, but it was like few and far between. And that's what everybody complained about. They're like, man, it's just so time consuming because you have to do everything manually or pay for ads. That was the, the way it was. Well, 
now they've because you know Facebook owns them. They eventually came out with an API, and so now you can like schedule stuff. You can do um, you can you can actually I think you can use Messenger now with it. Like if I go into Facebook, I can get my messages from Instagram in my Facebook account. So it's Instagram is definitely a big. It's everybody's going to be there. So, and I think for for business standpoint, I think that Instagram is better than Snapchat. But what what was funny about that was that um, I was talking to my mother in law, and she said, Cindy, who's my sister in law, said she's not on Facebook anymore. She said that Facebook is so last year, not really that way. She just basically said that, and that we're she's using a different program. I said, well, what's she using? I don't know of anything that's out that's new that we would be going to. And I was like, that's so weird. I wonder if she's, she finally told me after like three weeks, she's like, oh, she said it's Snapchat. And I started laughing hysterically. And I'm like, that's the Craigslist example all over again. Because didn't I just said that Snapchat's on its way out and somebody, my sister-in-law, who's got to be 50 now, just got on Snapchat. And I'm like, this is hilarious. I love the way the world works now. It's just so much fun to see that, you know, I mean, think about that. She would be somebody that we were targeting on Facebook a year ago. And now that person has moved on to Snapchat. And I'm like, it just cracks me up. I'm like, this is just so, it's so fun to see. It's very annoying to market to, but it's so much fun to see. And it's also a, a very good example of why we need to be in multiple channels and we need to have multiple strategies. And while, despite the fact that we haven't talked about email marketing, we should be capturing emails and using emails still, even though that's a small percentage of what we do. So yeah, Brian, it would be interesting if you'd be willing, definitely, you know, message me on Facebook and we'll set something up. So that way you can, it doesn't have to be like detailed here. Like I do show you everything. It doesn't have to be like that just to like kind of give some tips and stuff. And then that'd be, I think that'd be really helpful for everybody. We can do it on a Monday one if you want to, instead of this one or whatever. Everybody's scared of Google Plus now, aren't they? You guys are all Snapchatting, aren't you? You're Snapchatting about Snapchat. <laughs> hey, you I'm have a, a shirt. Shh. You have a I'm sweetie. I'm, I'm I'm on I'm on the phone. I'm on the computer talking to people. Um, you have a whole new shirt. April Fool. Okay, thank you, baby. Go back out with Grandma, okay? Okay. I'll be done in a few minutes, all right? Okay. Okay, I love you. I do. She's got, she's got such a cute voice, except when she screams, and then I'm deaf, and I go, hmm. Yeah, she likes, I don't know why she's doing April Fool's jokes now already. Maybe because April Fool's is Easter, and we won't be able to do them that day. I don't know. But that's a five-year-old for you. She was telling me the other day how she wanted Santa to come. Uh oh, she's coming. Oh, you're shutting my door now? I don't know why somebody keeps blocking it in the first place. Thank you. I think Grandma told her to come shut the door. You know, she goes, um, I we need Santa to come. And I was like, Well, I don't I don't think Santa Santa's sleeping. And she's like, no, no, Santa needs to come. She's like, how about April? We'll have we'll have Christmas in April. And I'm like, we can't. Christmas is in December, you know, with Jesus' birthday. And she's like, oh, yeah. But we could celebrate it in April, too. <laughs> so she tells me. <laughs> she's very trying to figure out ways to get, to get more Christmas presents. And she even told me the reason why she wanted Santa to come is because she needs more toys. <laughs> I'm like, oh, the five-year-old. Oh, she's, Brian, I got to tell you, you say she's very smart. She is not just smart. She is, she has some critical thinking skills that I haven't seen with most kids. And I didn't, I don't think I was that way until I was older. So let's say, for example, she asks, and I'll give the exact same example. So I used to come visit my dad in Texas, which I now live here, but I used to come visit him. And I was probably 10, 11 years old. And I would come and I'd be like, hey, dad, dad, let's go to the ice. Let's go get ice cream at the ice cream, you know, whatever ice cream, what's been around, Baskin Robbins, right? That's been around long enough. It was probably that. 
And he goes, oh, no, it's Monday. They're closed. And I'm like, what do you mean they're closed? And she's like, and he's like, okay, wait, they're closed on Mondays. That's just, it's a law here that they close on Mondays. And I, oh, maybe we were in Oklahoma when this happened. But anyway, it doesn't matter. And I was like, wait, are you sure, dad? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, why don't you go ahead and pull that? Tell me what law it is. And he just starts laughing. He's like, there's a lawyer inside of you. And I was like, okay, whatever. You know, I was young enough. It, didn't, it was just funny or whatever. But, you know, I was like, basically prove it. So she was two. Okay. So she's five now. When she's two, she told me she wanted to go to Jason's deli. Maybe she was pushing three. So it was probably closer to three because she was talking pretty well. And um, I said, well, we can't go to Jason's deli because they're closed today. So what? I just pulled that right out of my dad's book, right? I'm like, well, they're closed today. And she goes, drive by and let me see. That's what she tells me. Drive by and let me see. I want to check. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. A th- a, well, let's call her three because I think she was almost three. A three-year-old saying, I call you out prove it. And I was like, I've never seen my sister's kids. You tell them that. And they're like, Oh, okay. No, I can't. And I'm like, I, I must've passed that on or something. Cause, <laughs> but I remember my dad telling me stuff like that when I was younger and I would just believe him. So I don't know at what point I stopped, but she never was that way for as long as I can remember. It was, I don't believe you. I'm going to go check for myself. So pretty funny. Well, I hope even though Google Plus is extremely confusing that you guys will go ahead and and create a Google Plus account. And, you know, we have enough space, I think, on here that if Brian and Sandra, if you guys want to hop on and be able to ask questions and engage instead of via chat, you guys are more than welcome to. You just send me your email like in the, you know, just hop into Facebook Messenger and message me with your email and I'll add it in as a presenter. And then you'll get a special link to come on and you'll be able to turn on your your microphone and everything. So that way we can do kind of what we did on Monday. I know I wasn't going to do that on Wednesday ones, but I mean, we might as well take advantage of that. And then if we start actually ever building, which I haven't really pushed it, but if we ever start building the Wednesday one to more, then we can explore how we want to do that and maybe just rotate or something because it's, it would be a lot, it's a lot better. I think when somebody else is on and asking questions and, you know, I can still present information or Brian can present information or if, you know, Sandra, if there's something you're like, oh, hey, I know all about how to find this phone, these kinds of phone numbers or whatever, you can say, you know, present the information you like. You know, a lot of times what I do before I get on, just so you guys know, is I double check the information I say, right? So I don't want to give you guys the most, I don't want to give you outdated information. So even though I use it all, I have this stuff implemented, I'll go Google it before I hop on to make sure I'm not lying to you. And that's what I did with Google Plus. And there's like no current information none but my point being if there's something that you're interested in or something you have some sort of experience with you know we can always schedule that in there and then I can bring up some extra pieces of information to supplement and that way you know we have a full hour to talk about it and then I'll have the most current information and I'll have some sources for you so I will help is my point because I think it's good to have to share the information with one another. Brian seems to have a ton of resources and information, and he is just sitting back and being quiet. And he's just like, yep, I already know all this. <laughs> I, You know, I did not know. Oh, Sandra, I am actually, I'm actually done with all my classes for my PhD. I just have to finish my dissertation. So I'm in the last, second to last section. And the the section I'm in right now is basically compiling the information for the interviews. And so I've conducted all the interviews and I just need to put all the information together. But I spent like three hours yesterday just trying to get into the class that I wasn't supposed to be in until this week. But apparently they put me in last week. And so I spend more time trying to get into my class and do what they want, the requirements just to check attendance than anything else with my PhD. And the webinars, the webinars are kind of easy for me because, because I use everything. All I have to do is fine tune them. Like I did, you know, try to search the Google stuff. It's hard to set up a Google account when you already have it, right? You already have it. You already have it in place. And I'm like, wait, how on earth do you do this? Because two years ago, Google Plus was its own entity. It was separate from everything else. So when I set mine up, it's different than the way you set it up today. 
they still have a bunch of annoying buttons and no clear, no clarity on what to do, which completely cracks me up. But because, you know, there's the conversion strategies and here's how you use your experience. That's what they su should be focused on. And yet they don't focus on it. So, Brian, I know you sit there and say that, oh, yeah, I don't know anything. But your mul multiple Instagram accounts tells me that you do know something because I like I said, I have the Instagram accounts. I don't even think I've put any content on them yet. I know how to use Instagram. I know what to do with it. But when it comes to strategy on Instagram, I'm like, how do people find you? I don't know. So we're going to be testing that. Now, my whole thing is, is that I didn't think that my audience is on Instagram. But now after doing some more research and talking to people, I think that Instagram is actually going to be an area we do need to build on, which is also why I put it after YouTube, because I want to make sure that I bring you, you know, better information. And like I said, there's this. So let me ask you, Brian, have you ever heard of a link tree? Okay, so you've heard of it, but not used to, okay. So that's, you know, I heard of that because that was one of the dilemmas with Instagram was that you can only have one link. Well, this link tree is supposed to be able to help with that so that your one link goes to a page of links within Instagram. So I'm like, okay, well, before we start doing Instagram, we need to talk more about that because that might be a solution for e-commerce. Because, you know, the traditional in your bio, you have the one link. And so if you have that one link going to, you want them to, it to go to somewhere you could ha have a call to action typically because you only get the one shot or you have to swap that link out regularly. And I'm like, well, and that's the thing. So Instagram is really, really, really geared for business as far as it goes for influencers. And so that's where there, there's actually a really good you know, if there's something, if you're like, oh, hey, I love sharing information with people, you should become an influencer on Instagram, not just you, Brian, but Sandra or anybody else that listens to this later on. I mean, that's something that you could always do. And if you build up a good enough audience and you start, people start paying you to promote stuff and blah, blah, blah. That's a really good way to like start a um, business. Like I'm thinking about that for our young, my youngest stepson, he's got to do something. Right. And I'm like, yeah, maybe he should just start an Instagram account because he knows how to do that kind of stuff. And maybe he should just be like a local influencer here around town and that way influence teenagers on where to go and everything. The problem is all he does is play video games. So how is he going to be an influencer? I'm like, well, maybe he could be an influencer in the video game world. I don't know how to look at that. I found something else that's an option. I don't know if he can do it until he's 18, though. Right, right. And that's where I'm like... Maybe that would be a good idea for him. I mean, he's real quiet, but the second he turns 18 and he's out of his mom's grasp, he's going to be like running around, building up a network. He's going to be a freaking politician or something. In fact, no, I, he's, his grandfather, my father-in-law, is really connected here locally. So, yeah, anyway, I, I keep thinking about that, about how we can help him. There's one. Now, here, tell me, Brian, this will tell me if you need to come on and be like my regular co-sponsor or not right now, have you ever heard of this? No, nope, not Turks. Turk. mturk.com. Amazon Mechanical Turk. Have you ever heard of that? He's not saying anything just for the replay. He's probably writing it. Oh, Brian, you almost almost made it so that I was going to have to say you have to come on. I still think you should. I still think you should join me on these. But, um, yeah, so this one I just found out about the other day, and I'm like, oh, ho, ho, I'm still playing with this. However, this is what I want to see, how, how old you have to be, because I wanted to see if he can become a worker on this. Because one of the tasks that I'm doing with this is with YouTube. And I'm like, so this is basically um, crowd crowdsourcing, but it's through Amazon. And I'm like, how? I didn't even know they had this. 
I, I did not know at all that they had this. So somebody told me about it the other day and I was like, what? So yeah, they call them human intelligence tasks, right? So they got things that people do. So this is better than, I mean, it costs more obviously than automating something, but if you have somebody, if you want somebody to watch like a YouTube video or something and you're like, man, I can't get my views up high enough so that YouTube will see me that, and that's what I'm doing is I'm going to test this for YouTube, but there's this one and there's another one. I can't remember the name of it something workers and I'll, I'll find that once I get all of these things in place and test them all I'll definitely tell you guys about it and show, share my information with you but this one is one that it's like you're always looking for like people on Fiverr the same stuff that people on Fiverr do you can have them do through here the difference is, is that the people on Fiverr should already have the skills and this one you might have to tell them a little bit more so here we go like this is a good example um it says humans can do more things more effectively than some computers such as identifying objects in a photo or video i'm going to tell you we've talked about this before google can't read a photo if google can't read a photo and facebook can't read a photo very well then that's something that computers cannot do effectively anyway right now so like let's say that if you had like a you wanted to go in and tag stuff or you want you know, that that's what a lot of them they talk about is like going in and tagging items in like a catalog or something a, a computer can't do that. You have to have somebody manually do that. So anyway, so this was pretty, pretty interesting. And I haven't had a chance to really look at it, but he showed it to me and, and I was like, well, it's probably ex more expensive than it was five years ago when he did this presentation five years ago. I'm going, how did I not hear about this for the last five years? That's crazy. But you get to, you assign the, the amount and everything It's really cool. So I'm definitely playing with that. And then I will share with you guys this, this stuff. And like I said, we might talk actually more about that, not, maybe not next week, but soon when we talk about YouTube, because there's some strategies for building um, your YouTube channel and your YouTube um, video momentum. But I, like I said, I got to test them out. I've got a video right now that I'm prepping to do. And I'm, I'm like, well, the only problem is, is that I don't think I have any competition. So if I do any work on it, it'll look weird. And yeah. Oh, the challenges. Well, I hope you guys decide that you're going to do Google Plus and eventually when we get to the end of this. So let me go back to this real quick. Yeah, I'm going to use the Amazon, the mturk.com thing. The, I'm going to use that to, um, to try to, it's just the beginning. You just need to get some views in the beginning so that YouTube knows you exist for that keyword, right? So you have to, there's some manipulation you kind of have to do for it and you have to have some instructions. But if you do that, it's the same thing with Etsy. So in, in Etsy, if you go in and, and this is, well, if whenever, if we ever want to do Etsy, I'll definitely teach you guys this. But when you look in Etsy, when somebody does a search term, it's the same concept on Amazon or anything else. So somebody does a search term for, um, well, we'll do frog flannel since I've got that. My sister, I've been doing stuff for her. Right, so frog flannel square. So let's say that now I want I want to rank for frog flannel fabric. So somebody types that in there, and then I would go through and here's Snappy Baby right here. Right, this is hers. This is hers. This is hers. So because if I wanted, let's say I wanted to get this one boosted, which I don't, since the she's literally first, second, and third organically. That is freaking awesome. My sister is very good at this. And then again, right here, one, two, three, four. She's fifth. That's funny that these are right next to each other. That must be the person that works at, um, anyway, that's the Joann's. She works at Joann's and that's the actual Joann's picture. Really, that's funny. That's cool. So anyway, so let's say if I wanted to, and I didn't rank, let's say she didn't rank first or I wanted to get a different one up in the front, like I could go in here and then I would click on it and I would spend some time in here, right? Aw, thanks. And so once I spend some time in here and then, you know, look around, shop around, like the product, whatever, right? Favorite the shop, which I already have a favorite. I think, is there a way to like this particular one? Can you do that in here? Yeah, so you could add this to favorites. Like you could have a micro worker do this even on Etsy, right? You could have somebody come in here or um, I say micro worker. Maybe that's the other site, microworkers.com. That might be, but anyway, 
that might be where that term came from. So you could have somebody come in here, crowdsource this, where they come in here and they're like, okay, and they do all this and they favor it, and it would like manipulate the search results. Even if it's temporary, the point with that is that, see hers is obviously, she's permanently ranking here. But obviously, if, if you can, let's say that's a high search term, if you can get in the front ones, we already know that if you're in the top, how many ever, and this is why the ads are here, right? So if you're in the top, if, probably if you're the first page for Etsy, somebody's going to click on you and they're, they're going to have the potential to, uh-oh, Brian, can you not hear me? Sandra, can you hear me? Okay. So Brian's computer's messing around with him. Okay, well, I'll, I'll keep going for the replay then. And then, um, and Sandra, since you can hear me. So let's say that, you know, if you get in the in the front views, if you have a good product at a good price, it, that actually doesn't matter on Etsy. So same thing with YouTube. You don't have to have a great video. If you're in the first five, you're going to get clicked on. And the more you get clicked on, the more likely you're going to have a purchase so or have a conversion or whatever. So people are going to view you on YouTube. So it's the same concept with Etsy, same concept with Amazon, same concept with any of these. And when you have them search by that search term and then find your listing, even if it's especially when it's not on the first page, then what that does is that boosts your credibility for that keyword. So if you're ranking on page two or three and you're trying to rank higher, that's how you do that. And so that's part of why I was showing the the um, and the Amazon thing to help to show that. And so that's something, those are strategies we'll talk more about as we get into building an actual conversion product because we need to test our conversions and we need to, um, you know, but we need, to, we need to build a product that does convert first. And so right now we're, we've, we've laid the foundation, right? Let me go back to my PowerPoint real quick. We've laid the foundation where, um, let me go back here to my list. You know, we, we have our Facebook accounts that are, are there ready for us to, sh to share content. We've got Twitter ready to share content. We've got LinkedIn ready to share content. We've got Pinterest ready to pin content. And eventually we'll build that into more of a strategy with groups. But for now, we're just going to pin pin stuff. Google Plus, where we can share, where we can share content. Instagram's a little bit trickier, which again is why it's going to go after YouTube. But YouTube is where we're also going to, you know, we're going to be driving traffic with it. So once we get all of these in place and we have that foundation built, then we start going into a, a bigger strategy where we go, okay, we have this, let's go back to our product and let's find a converting product. And now that we have a converting product, let's expand that. Let's put some more effort into it. Let's put some ads into it. And that's when we start getting into more of the paid ads. Paid ads are a great way to test too. Not on Facebook right now. That's just the way it is. So, well, I gonna, I'm starting to get really stuffy. So if we have, um, Okay, Brian. Wrapping up now. Okay, so we're I'm gonna wrap it up because my nose is getting all stuffy. I have no idea where my daughter is. I have to find her. And then because I don't hear her and I don't hear grandma, and it's after five o'clock here. So they probably left and I have to go feed her. So um I'm gonna wrap it up. But if you guys have any additional questions or um, you know, if anybody if you want send me your email if you haven't already and I'll get you added on so we can actually talk live in the next weeks. And if you want to do um, the Monday ones as well for obviously on the replay, this would be for the K and K people, then send me, just let me know that too. And then we will talk more in the groups. And of course you can always message me through Facebook. I am, I respond as fast as I can. And if I see it and my daughter hasn't stolen my phone, Yep, I'll go feed her. Thanks. Thanks for coming, Sandra. And I know Brian's off already, but thank you, Brian, for coming. And I know we had a couple other people who were going to come and didn't make it. And we miss you. And we'll see you guys next week and on the replay. And I'll try to get this out by tomorrow. So have a great night. And thank you again.